Hey, this is Jacob from Thin Air 3D, and today we're going to design some basic threads for 3D printing. So rather than just simply showing you how to model the threads, I'm going to show you step by step how to use Fusion 360 to model one of these and print it yourself. Um, my girlfriend uses these cotton swabs to clean off her makeup, so I figured I'd use this tutorial as an excuse to make a cool little travel size container for hers. You can follow along with the tutorial to make one exactly like it, or you should be able to pick up all the info you need to model your own threads, your own box, and just start using threads for your 3D printing. So let's get started in Fusion 360. If you don't have it yet, you can get a hobbyist license absolutely free, and you should be able to follow along with me regardless of your experience level. So uh, first thing you wanna do is save your file. I already saved mine as Cotton Swab Box. Um, just left click save and follow the prompts and you should be good to go. Um, what we want to do is make sure our units are set up correctly. I model in millimeters, yours may be set to inches, uh, I don't know, but go up here and find your preferences menu, and then um, once your preferences menu opens, we are going to change from inches to millimeters, or make sure it is in millimeters, so go to unit and value display, and then down here, uh, you want to make sure it is set to metric millimeter newton seconds, it may be set to inches currently. And then if you want to change your default units, you can go down to default units under design, and then uh, you can change it to millimeters, and that will make your new designs default to millimeters. Click apply, and then okay, and we are good to go. So let's jump into our sketch. We're going to left click create sketch, and then we are going to select this ground plane right here, which will help us be oriented better for printing later. So we're going to left click that ground plane, and it's going to automatically orient us, and you should see top in the view cube right here. And then we are going to left click center diameter circle up here and we are going to left click the very center you should see it snap to our origin point and then we're going to drag this out and i'm going to just punch in on my keyboard 62 millimeters and then press enter i already measured the cotton swab and i want it to be 62 millimeters in diameter um side note i I guess I should have mentioned the box that you saw at the beginning of the video. That's what we're currently modeling right now. I have yet to finish it or print it. Um, you just saw the result of uh, what we're about to do and some editing wizardry. But um, let's keep moving. So next we want to go ahead and use offset. Left click offset and then left click our 62 millimeter circle. And I want to offset this three millimeters and then click enter. And then we are going to use offset again, and you can either left click up here or you can just right click in the middle of nowhere and drag upwards and find repeat offset. And then I'm gonna left click our original circle, and this time I'm gonna offset five millimeters and then click enter. I offset from the original circle because it doesn't like when you try to offset off of something that's already been offset. Um, it just acts a little wonky, but that's all we need. So we're gonna hit finish sketch from here. We are going to go ahead and create our box so we're going to use the extrude command left click extrude and select our three profiles that we drew and then from there just drag down and i want to go about 40 millimeters you can either drag it down all the way 40 millimeters or you can just punch in minus 40 or you can just type in it type it into this box over here and then we're going to hit okay now that we've got it extruded down let's go ahead and hollow it out for that we're going to use the shell command Pretty simple, just left click mod or left click shell. If it's not up in this menu, um, find it in the modify drop down. It's down right here. And then from there, we're gonna click our top face, and then we're just gonna punch in five millimeters and then click enter. Um, and we're gonna make some adjustments later on at the very end uh, to make, you know, to kind of optimize it a little bit. But for now, we're just gonna kind of go with what will make sense. Um, now you should see that our original sketch also disappeared. We still wanna keep using it. So we're gonna make it visible again. Go over and find your sketches drop down menu. You may have to click the arrow to drop it down, find sketch one, and then you're gonna click on the eyeball to make it visible again. Um, now we're gonna use extrude again to cut our outer lip down where the threads are gonna end up going. So we're gonna just left click extrude and select our outermost profile and we want it to go down 15. So I'm just gonna type in minus 15 and then hit enter. And you should see it cut that away and our box is pretty much good to go. We're gonna add the threads later after we have the lid built. Um, but the first thing we actually wanna do is turn this from a body to a component. I'm not gonna get into bodies versus components in this video. I keep saying that I'm gonna do a video eventually, but it does need its own video. For now, just trust me um, and right click body, and then we're gonna go create components from bodies. Uh, again, you might need to left click your drop down under bodies to make it visible. But yeah, right click, 
create components from bodies and it's going to automatically create a component down here let's go ahead and double left click to rename it box and then click enter and uh, we're good with the box for now so let's go ahead and make our lid we're going to use extrude again so we're going to left click extrude and then we're going to select all of these three profiles again and then what we want to do actually is a two-way extrusion it automatically defaults to one direction but we're going to change our direction menu to two sides and then we want it to go downwards 15 millimeters to meet up with where that box lip is going to be and you can see it's defaulting to want to cut that original box so what we want to do is change our operation from cut to new component and that is going to set us up for our new lid and then we want it to go upwards by a matter of our thickness which was five millimeters and then from there just making sure it says new component we can hit okay now i think we're pretty much done with the sketch so let's go ahead and get the sketch out of the way and then from here we want to hollow out the lid and uh, i guess just work on it a little bit so let's hide the box and then before hollowing out the lid let's actually add a little bit of a chamfer to the top edge um, we want to add the chamfer first so it hollows correctly. So we're going to go to modify and then find chamfer. And then we're just going to left click this top edge. And then let's do, I'm just going to punch in three. Let's do like a little three millimeter chamfer. I think that'll look okay. You can always modify it later um, based on how it looks. But from there, let's use that shell command again that we used on the box. So let's left click shell and then left click our bottom face. Um, and then this time we're going to use a two millimeter shell instead of a five millimeter shell. So I click two or enter two and then hit enter. Um, and the reason it's two millimeters, if you remember with the box, I'm gonna make the box visible again and hide the lid. Real quick, let's double left click this and rename this lid. Um, but let's hide it. And you can see, as you remember, our lip that the um, lid is gonna rest onto is only two, two millimeters thick. Um, so let's go ahead and start getting our threads added into there. And it's actually really, really simple. Um, all we're going to do is go up to create and then find the thread command in Fusion 360. It's, it really is, like, like I said, it's literally this simple. So click thread and then we're going to find the profile that we want to create our threads on. Now to actually make it 3D printable, because this for some reason just does like a modeled version, um, you're going to select the box over here that says modeled. And that's actually going to create the geometry that can be 3D printed for you. Um, now, as you notice, this by default is not looking too hot. And the reason is, um, is the pitch of our thread. Every different model is going to be different. And this may be something that you end up having to play around with because everything that you do is going to have different needs, different applications. But let's click on our front view and let's just look at something. So under designation, M68 by 6, this is telling us that our thread the major diameter is 68 millimeters and our pitch is six millimeters. Now the pitch is the distance from these teeth between each other. So right here we have a 15 millimeter section with a pitch of six. So we really don't have that many threads to work with and the higher your pitch, the deeper these cuts are gonna have to be to have the correct angles. So let's lower this. If you just click this menu, it's gonna give you options for different pitches. And if you, as you can see, if you lower that pitch from six millimeters to four millimeters, now these are four millimeters apart, and that gives us more threads within this 15 millimeter distance, um, which is obviously way more appropriate for our given application. But let's bring it down a little bit further. Um, let's try M3 and see how that looks, which the lid is gonna be kind of the deciding factor on this but M3 may work well for us. Um, and this again is gonna depend on your nozzle size and a lot of different things, but I have done some pretty fine threads before. So this is where the whole guessing and testing within product of design comes into play. Um, so let's just keep moving, uh, enough ranting about threads. Let's click okay. Um, we did the M68 by three. So let's go ahead and add that same thread pattern to the lid. So let's hide our box and show our lid and then we're going to add the thread to this. So we're going to go back to create and hit thread. Or if you remember, we can just right click and do repeat thread. And then we're going to select the surface that we want a thread. And again, you're going to click modeled to make it actual geometry. And then we're going to change M68 by six to M68 by three. 
And then from there, we have got our threads and we're gonna hit okay. One side note, these are both right-handed right threads, but if you wanted left-handed threads, you can just change them to left-handed and make sure that both parts are left-handed. Um, but then we're gonna hit okay. Now we've got threads on our lid and our box, but we're not quite done yet. We wanna make sure that it's actually gonna work right. And we want to add a little bit of clearance in there. Um, now, let me just show you something that helps you just see everything and, and have good visibility on what you've got going on with your threads. So let's go back to our front view and I'm gonna show you how to use a section analysis. So just go up to inspect and then find section analysis and left click on the, you can pretty much click either of these planes, but we're gonna click this one right here and then hit okay. And as you can see, it's showing us a cutaway view. Let me hold shift scroll wheel to rotate. It's giving us a cutaway view where we told it to of what's going on within our box. Now you may be wondering, oh, that thread's not gonna work, that's fucked up. Well, it's because it's rotated incorrectly. It's the same thread pattern, so it doesn't really make a difference, but um, to, to get a better visual representation of it, let's just rotate this lid. So left click move and then it's actually got rotate selected already for me, but it may already, it may be on free move for you. So you're gonna select rotate and then you're gonna make sure that this says components. It may also already say bodies, but make sure it says components. And then you're gonna click our lid component and then you're gonna select axis. And then you're gonna choose this axis or you can choose you know, pretty much any of the diameter axis, it won't matter. Um, and then you're literally just gonna grab this and rotate it around and take a look, watch right down here, watch our thread pattern as I rotate it into place. I'm gonna rotate it and you can see right around 180 degrees looks pretty good. Um, I'm gonna hit front view. You can look and see that it is lined up properly. So we're gonna hit okay. And that just helps us kind of visualize our clearance a little bit better. Um, so let's go ahead and add some clearance in. Uh, I'm just gonna hide the box and add the clearance to the lid. So hide box. And then to add our clearances, literally we're just gonna push pull some of these profiles away. So I'm just kind of rotating around to get a better view. So I'm gonna select this face and then while holding shift, I'm gonna select this inner edge and then I'm gonna rotate around and you can see I'm gonna, while holding shift, select this top edge. Um, now, one more, actually, we need the innermost edge. So while holding shift, we're gonna select this innermost edge. So that's four different edges that you need to have selected. And then you're just gonna hit press pull. Now from here, threads, this is all different and all, you know, print quality differences and everything, but I personally have a lot of success and I like using a 0.3 millimeter clearance. So we're gonna hit minus 0.3 and then hit enter. And you can see that the threads, you can see them push outwards. And one quick way to make sure that it worked well, because sometimes it can act wonky, watch your threads and then hit Control Z. See those and then Control Y to push it back out, Control Z to undo, Control Y to redo. That pushed them back out. And then to get a look at what they look like in the box, you can see that we've got a decent little bit of clearance between them. Um, and that actually should work well. We've got plenty of space between this right here and up here. So our limiting factor is gonna be, you know, as you screw it down, the bottom of the lid is gonna hit the top of this little lip and hold it into place. So that's pretty much it. We've got the, uh, the whole box done. And from here, it's just a matter of kind of stylizing it and, you know, making some cuts and doing some things to possibly save on material. Like right here, for instance, one good example is this doesn't necessarily need to be five millimeters thick. I just wanted to do the shell command and make sure that the outer edges were five millimeters thick. So let's remove a little bit of material from this and kind of get things optimized for 3D printing. So let's use that push pull command again. We're gonna hit press pull and then we're just gonna select this bottom face. And I just want this to be um, two millimeters thick. It doesn't really have to be that strong. So let's do minus three. Bring that down. Now we've got a two millimeter thick box and we've got a little bit more room for some more cotton swabs into it. Okay, so now that we've got that, let's go ahead and add a chamfer to the bottom, which let's just do a three millimeter chamfer so it matches the top, I guess. Um, so we're gonna go to modify and then click chamfer and we are going to click down here and we're gonna punch in three and then hit enter. 
And now we've got our three millimeter chamfer. And I think this box is pretty much good to go. Um, we should be able to print it. So let's get it oriented for printing. And this is future me cutting in while I am editing to let you know, don't worry about what's going on in the video right now. I'm just going to kind of fast forward through this part because I shouldn't have bothered worrying about reorienting it because there's some other settings that may need to be changed and different slicers import different models. So there's no point in, in showing you this, but uh, I'm just going to jump you into exporting these models. So don't worry about the fact that the lid is upside down here. To export, all you got to do is right click your box component and then hit save as STL. Um, for refinement, I just pick high, that way there's um, more polygons and it looks a little better. And then from there, you're just going to hit OK. And then choose where you want to save it on your desktop. Um, and then save your box. And then the same with the lid, we are going to save as STL, click OK. And then hit save and we are good to go on our boxes. So let's go ahead and bring it into our slicer. I personally use Prusa Slicer for slicing my models. Um, you'll be fine with Cura or pretty much anything else. I just like Prusa Slicer for all of my printers that I can use it for, not just my uh, Mark III, but I use it for my Ender 5 Pro and um, everything else. And yeah, you can see the models they imported, uh, even though I reoriented the, the lid in Fusion 360, it wanted to import this way. So I just want this to be face down. Um, and then I'm just gonna do like 10% infill. And I'm actually, I have a 0.6 millimeter nozzle on my printer. So um, I'm, and I think it'll still be okay. Let's go ahead and slice it. Uh, I'm doing a 0.2 millimeter layer height. You can see up here, 0.2 millimeter, 0.6 um, layer height uh, you want to make sure to not have supports on or you know if you do have supports on for something then make sure that it's not going to interfere with your threads because uh, your your support angle threshold can affect that but uh, just giving it a quick look to make sure that uh, basically I'm just looking at where the threads um, you know are cut into the walls to make sure that it's not too thin um, which sometimes can be an issue depending on what your uh, what type of threads you have, but everything looks pretty good here. So uh, let's see, it says it'll be 55 grams of filament and just under three hours of printing, which isn't too bad. We could probably optimize this a little bit further, but um, I think that's okay for whipping this up. And the one thing that I wanna mention, I guess, is you could probably get away with a little bit higher of a layer height, um, but really, you know, like I said, it's just gonna be dependent on your models, but let's get this thing printing. moment of truth to see if our thread design worked out which spoiler alert it does so thank you so much for following along with this tutorial i hope you found it useful and feel free to comment below and let me know other things you may want to learn how to do or any specific things you would like to see me model